this is Danny Vieira from Modern Mana. I have a very special presentation for you today. It's called The Leaves of the Trees. So let me begin with just a little prayer. Lord, I just pray that you will bless in this presentation that your name will be glorified. Father, I pray that I will decrease, that you may increase. Send your Holy Spirit and bless me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, this presentation is called The Leaves of the Trees. And I really enjoy it because I believe the Lord gave me this presentation. And you're going to hear some things today that I believe you've never heard in your life as we look to the Bible. So let's begin in our first slide here. It says, in the Word of God, in Genesis 1, 26, that God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. The Bible also tells us in Genesis 1, 29, that, and God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, and every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. So God gave the first diet unto man right there in the Garden of Eden after he created him. The Bible says in Genesis 2.16, of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. Now we know there was one tree in that garden that God said we're not to eat it, and that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But imagine how many beautiful trees that God gave us for food. The Bible says in Genesis 2.9, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of garden. Are you getting a visual of the beauty of this garden of Eden? All these luscious trees, just one that God said, don't eat. That was the test that he put upon man to see if man would be faithful and loyal to his words. And then he gives us a tree of life. Now, this tree of life was very interesting. When we look in the word again, it says, and by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and that side shall grow all trees for meat or for food. It shall bring forth new fruit according to the months. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat. Do you know it wasn't just for meat that we received that tree of life? But the leaves of that tree had special property as well. In fact, the word of God says, and the leaf thereof shall be for medicine in Ezekiel 47, 12. That word medicine is from the Hebrew word terephal. And that word also means healing. Isn't that beautiful? So the leaves of this tree of life are for the healings of the nations. You know, if you put Ezekiel 47, 12, side by side with Revelation 22, 1 and 2, you see a great comparison. It's saying the same thing in essence, as far as I can tell. It says in Ezekiel, by the river upon the bank thereof on this side and that side, when we look at Revelation 22, it says, and on either side of the river. It also says in Ezekiel, it shall grow all the trees for meat by this river, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof as medicine, as we've learned, for healing. So when you look at Revelation 22, it says the same thing. It says that he showed him a pure river of water of life. We see the river, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God. Ezekiel said the sanctuary. It says, and from the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side. So it looks like there's a trunk on each side of this river, and this beautiful tree of life's growing over the river. And then it says, which bears 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the trees were for the healings of the nation. So here we see in both instances, in Ezekiel and Revelation, that these leaves have special property. It's not just the fruit of the tree of life. So when I look at this, I ask myself the question in Revelation 22, that it bears 12 
manner of fruits. Now the manner could be supplied, but 12 fruits it supplies. So as I look at this, I find here that could it be possible that there's 12 beautiful fruits on this tree? Say we have mangoes in January and plums in February and peaches in March. How about it bears all 12 at once. So somebody likes the peaches and somebody likes the plums, somebody likes the cherries and somebody likes the apricots. Well, let's look at the leaves of this tree for a minute. It's for the healing of the nations. Well, do we have leaves from trees today that can be used for healing? And the answer is absolutely yes. Let's begin with the papaya leaves or the pawpaw tree. The fruits are consumed as food and as medicine. Their dried and powdered stems and leaves are used to prepare medicinal teas against infection and to improve digestion. Papaya leaves also enhance the immune system. They improve platelet function and prevent chemotherapy-related adverse effects. Papaya leaves exhibit anti-tumor, immunomodulatory, and antioxidant effects in vitro and the leaf extracts contain antibacterial compounds. Papaya leaves increase th thrombocyte counts as well. So it's very powerful for stimulating the immune system and the blood cells and the white blood cells to fight infection and other issues like virus. So these leaves are beneficial. If you look at the olive leaf now, Scientists have isolated the unique molecule that provides olives and their leaves with its multitude of health and life extending benefits. Known as olerapine, it is the polyphenol that can help lower bad cholesterol and blood pressure, prevent cancer, protect against oxidative damage, and help guard against cognitive, cognitive decline. Allurapine, this plant chemical in the olive leaves, is also responsible for olive oil's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, disease-fighting characteristics. In fact, when allurapine was given to animals with tumors, the tumors completely regressed and disappeared in 9 to 12 days. Isn't that a powerful statement? Absolutely. You see, the latest studies reveal that olive leaves benefit additional anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. They offer promise in fighting atherosclerosis, diabetes, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, and even arthritis. You know, the studies and these scientific papers that are being published tell us that olerapine and olive leaf extracts have numerous other mechanisms of action against cancer. They help prevent inflammation, another major promoter of tumor growth. In breast cancer cells specifically, allurapine reduces malignant cells, ability to respond to estrogen, the female hormone that may, many breast cancer cells depend on for their survival. In fact, we find that olerapine inhibits the production of the protein melting enzymes that cancer cells need in order to invade healthy tissues and metastasize to different parts of the body. Isn't that powerful? And what about tea tree oil? Have you ever heard of tea tree oil? I'm sure many of you out there have bought tea tree oil and you use it as an antiseptic and that's what it's really popular for. But tea tree oil, perhaps you do not know this, is an essential oil with a fresh camphoraceous odor, and it's taken from the leaves of the Melaleuca alternifolia, which is native to Australia. So some of the benefits of tea tree oil, as you see, is antiseptic, it's good for acne, it's good for insect bites, ringworm, lice, scabies, athlete's foot, recurrent herpes, vaginal infections, toothache, infections of the mouth, sore throat, ear infections. You know, I have used tea tree oil on a number of occasions if my child gets a cut or a scrape. I've used it under my arms for a deodorant. You know, I use tea tree oil toothpicks. So this helps kill what? Bacteria within the mouth. 
You know, you can even take tea tree oil, and I've heard women will use it. They'll dilute it down, maybe 25% tea tree oil, 75% water, and they can dip a tampon in there and use it vaginally, insert it vaginally for any vaginal infection. So tea tree oil has a number of uses, and it's something that I always keep in my herbal pharmacy cabinet. So go into the next slide now. Let's look at the benefits of eucalyptus leaves. Eucalyptus leaves, here's some great advice on natural remedies using the eucalyptus that God has given us. So you can take warm foot baths into which you've been put, have been put the leaves from the eucalyptus tree. There is great virtue in these leaves. And if you will try this, you will prove my words to be true. See, these instructions were given by God to Ellen White that she wrote in a book. You know, so I take this as great light from God in giving you a natural remedy. Look at this, a natural remedy that's gonna help with coughs and chest and lung problems. This is a prescription from heaven. So as I continue to read, the oil of the eucalyptus is especially beneficial in cases of cough and pains in the chest and lungs. If you want, you can make a trial of this remedy, which is so simple and which costs you nothing. I have often found that the application of eucalyptus leaves to a wounded part to be good in allaying inflammation and drawing out the poison, letter 24 and 1912. And even this, we all know about charcoal. You know, we've used charcoal internally, externally, but look at this advice here. It says pulverized charcoal from eucalyptus wood that we have used it freely in cases of inflammation. So you know the instructions. You burn the wood, you get the charcoal, you put it into a wrap, you put some water in, you mix it together, you make a poultice, and you apply that to an area of inflammation. Say there's even a sprained ankle or somebody's having inflammation in the bowels, inflammation in the joints, perhaps the knee. So this is great advice. And here's something special. How about a natural cough syrup that she wrote in letter 348 in 1908. I cannot advise any remedy for her cough better than eucalyptus and honey. Into a tumbler of honey, put a few drops of eucalyptus, stir it up well, and take whenever the cough comes on. I have had considerable trouble with my throat. But whenever I use this, I overcome the difficulty very quickly. I have to use it only a few times, and the cough is removed. If you will use this prescription, did you hear what I said? A divine prescription, you may be your own physician, and if the first trial does not an effect a cure, try it again, and the best time to take it is before retiring. So we've seen papaya leaves, we've seen tea tree oil leaves, we've seen eucalyptus leaves. What about ginkgo biloba? Ginkgo biloba is another plant, the leaves of which are good for cerebral vascular deficiency and peripheral vascular deficiency. In other words, what it's saying is this herb from the leaves of the ginkgo plant are good for circulation getting more blood to the head, getting more blood to the peripheral areas of the body like the hands and the feet. So I see it as very beneficial for somebody with diabetes and maybe neuropathy. It's very good for people with hemorrhoids. As you look here, you'll find it increases circulation. It inhibits platelet aggregation. Its post-stroke is very valuable. Somebody's had a stroke because you wanna get the blood circulating and keep it thin. Varicose veins, hemorrhoids, Alzheimer's, poor memory, inner ear dysfunction, and even impotence. I remember one of my natural healers and teachers told me once that if you wanna heal an area of the body, get more blood there. So this herb is gonna increase circulation. And now I wanna to turn to a supernatural tree. The fruit of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden possess supernatural virtue. To eat of it was to live forever. Its fruit was the antidote of death. Its leaves were for the sustaining of life and immortality. Do you remember I had said to you that when God created man, Genesis 1.26, he gave him a diet. As he put him into a garden, the great garden of Eden. And then he provided 
an array. How, how many fruit trees? I have no idea. But in the midst of that garden, there was the tree of life. There was a river of life. There was the throne of God. And this tree bare 12 fruits every month. And I find that's a beautiful statement, isn't it? That we get to partake of the fruit from the tree of life. God is so good and he provides more than we, we can ever ask or think, doesn't he? So I want to talk about not only a supernatural tree, but I want to say, what does it mean symbolically? Who is the tree of life today where we can gain immortality and eternal life? You see, this tree of life, I believe, signifies Christ, his life to man. That through him, by eating of his word, and partaking of his spirit, we can have life eternal. Let's look at the Bible and see what it says. In 1 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. 1 Peter 2.24. Christ is the source of our life, the source of immortality. He is the tree of life. And to all who come to him, he gives spiritual life. Isn't that a beautiful thought? You see the value of the tree of, in the Garden of Eden, all those beautiful trees. You see the value of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, bearing 12 manner of fruits. Well, what does it all signify? Think of Jesus who died on that tree, who offers you the fruits of his Holy Spirit. As we move on, I want to move into an area that maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe you've never even applied it in scripture in the way that you're going to see now. You know the story of Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. See, Jesus has died. It's on that Friday where the Lord died. He passed away. And Joseph of Arimathea afterwards comes, and he wants to have the body of Jesus. He came there for and took the body. This is in John 19, verse 38 and 39. He took the body of Jesus, and there came also Nicodemus with him, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound. Oh, this is exciting what I've learned here. We've been talking about the healing value of the trees. Well, why the myrrh and the aloe? Well, let's move on now and and let's read in Desire of Ages, one of my favorite books in page 773. Then took they the body of Jesus and they wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. John 19, 39 and 40. The body together with the spices brought by Nicodemus was carefully wrapped in a linen sheet. And the Redeemer was born to the tomb. There the three disciples straightened the mangled limbs and folded the bruised hands upon the pulseless breath. So imagine Jesus has died on the cross and there's his bruised body. And so when Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea come, Nicodemus brought these spices or aloe and myrrh and they put it into the sheet and they put the body of Jesus and they wrapped them together. See, Jesus wasn't embalmed. He was just placed within the sheet with the spices. So moving on, I want to go to a story within the Word of God that you guys are familiar with. And it's about Joseph when his brothers cast him into the pit. Remember that story? And they left him there. They were jealous. He got the coat of many colors. And so they toss him into the pit, and, and we look that the man may be killed. Maybe wild beasts could come and destroy him. But in this story, in Genesis 37, 25, it says, And they took him, Joseph, and they cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, and to carry it down to Egypt. So these men from Gilead came bearing spicery and balm. And then specifically, it says the word myrrh. 
So we know that much. But what is the balm of Gilead? See, they had a balm. They had the spices. They had the myrrh. But a balm is an aromatic medicinal substance derived from plants. Gilead was an area east of the Jordan River, well known for its spices and ointments. The balm of Gilead was therefore a high quality ointment with healing properties. The balm was made from resin. Although the exact species is unknown, the Bible uses the term balm of Gilead metaphorically as an example of something with healing or soothing powers. Look at that picture there. Do you see this tree? What's happening here? It's bleeding sap, isn't it? So myrrh is an aromatic resin of a number of small thorny tree species of the genus Comifora, which is an essential oil termed an alloral resin, an oleo resin. Myrrh resin is a natural gum. Myrrh resin has been used throughout history as a, now mark this, as a perfume, as an incense, and as a medicine. So this is amazing. When a tree wound penetrates through the bark and into the sapwood, the tree bleeds a resin. Did you hear me? The tree bleeds a resin. So when people harvest myrrh, they wound the tree repeatedly to bleed them of the gum. So the tree bleeds the healing balm. Did Jesus bleed on a tree? Let's read. Christ is the great physician, not only of the body, but of the soul. He restores man to his God. God permitted his only begotten son to be bruised, that healing properties might flow forth from him to cure all our diseases. That's from Medical Ministry, page 120. You see, Jesus' blood, ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters, this is an awesome revelation that Jesus' blood is the balm of Gilead. The Bible says in Jeremiah 22, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? See, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ is full and sufficient. It is the new covenant sealed with his own blood which was shed for many for the remission of sins. It is the balm of Gilead, which God has provided to restore health and soundness to sin-stricken souls. Jesus is the great physician, and he can cure all the maladies of the soul. Remember when I was telling you that the balm of Gilead, that this myrrh was used as a perfume, as an incense, and as a medicine, well, so was Christ. What do I mean by that? Well, let's move on. See, Christ's blood is the balm of Gilead. Jesus, his offering was as a perfume. If we read in Ephesians 5, 2, and 3, the Bible says, Be ye therefore followers of God as your dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, when the Jew sinned, he would bring a lamb for an offering. And he'd confess his sins over that lamb. And that lamb was to be slain. And it was through the shedding of blood that there was remission for sin. See, as they looked to that blood, they were to look by faith to the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that would be Jesus who would come and die for them. And so that sacrifice was as a sweet-smelling savor as a lamb was sacrificed on the altar, because it represented the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to save sinners from sin. He did it to save the whole world. God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I read in Adventist Home 424, what sweetness flowed from his very presence the same spirit will be revealed in his children. 
Those with whom Christ dwells will be surrounded with a divine atmosphere. Their white robes of purity will be fragrant with perfume from the garden of the Lord, and their faces will reflect the light from his, brightening the path for stumbling and weary feet. Isn't that beautiful? So Jesus is the perfume. And just like the myrrh, he's the incense. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. It also says in Adventist Home 2.13, that Christ, your mediator, stands before the Father to present your prayers as a fragrant incense, mingled with his own merit and spotless righteousness. The silent, fervent prayer of the soul will rise like holy incense to the throne of grace and will be as acceptable to God as if offered in the sanctuary. Isn't that beautiful? How about the medicine? As the myrrh was also used as a healing balm. Jesus is the balm of Gilead, so he's a medicine. The Bible says in Psalms 103, 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all my, his benefits, who forgives all thy iniquities and heals all thy diseases. There are souls who have lost their courage. Speak to them. Pray for them. There are those who need the bread of life. Read to them from the word of God. There is a soul sickness no balm can reach, no medicine heal, but pray for these and bring them to Jesus Christ. And in all your work, Christ will be present to make impressions upon human hearts. So do you see in this work of healing, ladies and gentlemen, do you see that as Jesus is the balm of Gilead, that when we're involved in this health work, the medical missionary work, we are not only to bring the herbal remedies and the lifestyle program that's going to benefit them in preventing and reversing their disease, we're not only bringing them the eight laws of health, we must always bring them to that tree of life that shed his blood, that's a healing balm of Gilead for the salvation of the world. We must bring them to Jesus Christ. You see, what about the aloe? You've heard about the myrrh, that they put the myrrh in the linen and wrapped his body in the myrrh. But what's the significance of the aloe? Did you know that the aloe in biblical times is referred to as a tree? It says in Numbers 24, 24, as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of the line aloe, which the Lord hath planted. And there's a little picture of possibly what it would have looked like, an aloe tree. I love aloe vera. I have it planted in my yard. I used it many times for healing. I use the outer leaf to move the bowels. I use the inner leaf to, for sunburns. I use it internally. It's high in oxygen. It's very healing. It's good for arthritic type conditions. The aloe is a great healing plant, high in antioxidants. But I want to teach you a little history now that the earliest doctors seem to have been Romans. Pedanius Dioscorides, a Roman physician, traveled with the Roman armies, and he wrote a commentary in 41 to 68 AD of the uses he had found for aloe vera, particularly it was handy for boils, skin conditions, including ulcers, bleeding wounds. Did you hear that? Bleeding wounds. Aloe can be used internally for gums, throat, tonsil problems, and it has an antibiotic healing properties as well. But did you know, as I said, that aloe can oxygenate the blood? It is now known that an extract from aloe vera gel, when injected in the human bloodstream, greatly multiplies the oxygen transportation and diffusing capabilities of red blood cells. It boosts the oxygenation of the blood. In other words, if a patient is losing a tremendous amount of blood, such as a soldier who's wounded in the battlefield, they can be injected with a very small amount of extract taken from the aloe vera plant. This extract will then quickly diffuse through the bloodstream and multiply the effectiveness of the blood remaining in that person's system. Effectively, this aloe vera extracts makes that blood that's left in the body function as if it were a full supply of blood. 
That's amazing when I read that. And you know, it made me think. Jesus wasn't embalmed. He's wrapped in the linen with the spices, the aloe and the myrrh. Is it possible, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Psalm 16.10 and in Acts 2.27, is it possible? It says, for thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. You know, Jesus didn't break down. He wasn't decomposing. Something preserved him. Now, certainly it could have been supernatural. But did the aloe have anything to do with it? I hope to ask one day if it played a role. You know, as we compared Ezekiel with Revelation, I'm going to compare now Genesis with Revelation. You see, we see a tree of life in both instances. We have the tree of life referred to here in Genesis and the tree of life referred to a number of times in Revelation. And let me read these to you. We know the story well. The Lord planted the garden eastward in Eden. He put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground God made to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God said, behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and he take also of the tree of life and eat it and live forever. See, God didn't want an immortal sinner. So what does he do? He drove the man out of the garden. He placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned away every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So they can't have access to it anymore. We're not going to have an immortal sinner. So God blocks them with angels. But we find that we will have access to the tree of life again. Isn't that beautiful? We lost access in Genesis, but we gain access again to a certain amount of people in the Bible specific here who will have access to eat of it again. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, did you get that? To him that overcomes sin. Well, I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 22, 2 says, in the midst of the street of it on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. Blessed are ye that do his commandments. There you have it specifically. They're overcomers. They keep the commandments of God and they therefore have right to the tree of life and they may enter in through the gates of the city. So as you saw, we lost access in Genesis that we gain access again in Revelation. And what brings the two together? How can we gain that access and how do we have access to sustain our lives even now or to receive eternal life here and now? It's through the one who died on the tree. See, Jesus spans the gulf and he connects us. Isn't that beautiful? That through Jesus Christ, I will once again, as I look to him as my spiritual tree of life, I will gain access again to the literal tree of life. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? You know, Ezekiel, I believe it's in 66, it talks about from one Sabbath to another and from one new moon to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, saith the Lord. I believe it's possible that every Sabbath, every seventh day, we're keeping the Sabbath and worshiping God. But worshiping every month, I believe it could be at that tree of life. We're all gathered together to partake of the tree of life and the healing leaves that we contain or we get our immortality sustained forever and ever and ever. Isn't that powerful? Jesus spans the gulf and the Bible says in Genesis 28, 12, that he is the great ladder that Jacob saw. Yes, Christ is the ladder, the base of it resting upon the earth, the top reaching to the highest heavens, the broken links have been repaired, a highway has been thrown open, thrown up along which the weary and the heavy laden may pass. They may enter heaven and they might find rest. Jesus is not only the ladder, but he is the mediator between God and man. 
Through Christ, restoration as well as reconciliation is provided for man. The gulf that was made by sin has been spanned. There's that word. The gulf that was made by sin is spanned by the cross of Christ. That's the connecting link between Genesis and the overcomers in the book of Revelation that partake of the tree of life who keep the commandments of God. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. <laughs> A full, complete ransom has been paid by Jesus by virtue of which the sinner is pardoned and the justice of the law is maintained. All who believe that Christ is the atoning sacrifice may come and receive pardon for their sins for through the merits of Christ, communication has been opened between God and man. See, Jesus is the mediator. Jesus is the ladder, and Jesus, the Bible says, is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. There are not many ways to heaven. Did you hear that sentence? There are not many ways to heaven. Each one may not choose his own way. Christ says, I am the way, no man comes unto the Father but by me. He was the way when Adam lived. When Abel presented to God the blood of the slain lamb, representing the blood of the Redeemer, Christ was the way by which patriarchs and prophets were saved. He is the way by which alone we can have access to God. Isn't that beautiful? He's the ladder. He's the mediator. He's the way, the truth, and the life. You see, there are not many ways to heaven. And I want to tell you today, that the way that we need to get there is through his word. You see, we have the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. We have the cross, which is signified by Christ's death that we have a spiritual tree of life, and he's given us another tree, and I want to present it to you today. Must we wait until we are translated before we eat of the leaves of the tree of life? He who receives into his heart the words of Christ knows what it means to eat the leaves of the tree of life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to open up this word, this Bible, the holy book of the Lord. And do you know, as I open it and turn these pages, they're actually leaves, aren't they? They're the leaves, the pages of the book that has the words from the Lord on how to have life eternal. He who receives into his heart the words of Christ knows what it means to eat of the leaves. Did you catch that? This is an upward look, page 224, to eat the leaves of the tree of life. In his efforts to reach God's ideal for him, the Christian is to despair of nothing. Moral and spiritual perfection through the grace and the power of Christ is promised to all. Jesus is the source of power, the fountain of life. He brings us to his word and from the tree of life, here it is again, presents to us the leaves for the healing of sin sick souls. This is the word. This is the way. Jesus has left it for us that by reading his word, studying his word, we will find access to the tree of life once again in the earth made new. You see, the living oracles of God is written. They are the leaves of the tree of life. So plainly said to know God. Okay, page 12. It says the leaves of the tree of life, which human beings are to eat in order to gain spiritual life. As we eat the words of the Lord Jesus, they become unto us eternal life. The word that I speak unto you, he said, they are spirit and they are life. The restoring vital current from Christ heals the wounds that sin had made. Do you know what it means? They are spirit. This is a supernatural book, just as that was a supernatural tree. And when you come to this book and you eat of the leaves, there is life-giving power in the word of God that can transform you into a new creature. Yes, you can have a new birth experience even at an old age. This is what he was trying to explain to Nicodemus, who brought the myrrh and the aloe. To all who believe he is as the tree of life in the paradise of God, his 
branches reach to this world, that the blessings which he has purchased for us may be brought within our reach. He has given us a comforter, the Holy Spirit, which will present to us the precious fruit from the tree of life. From this tree, we may pluck and eat, and we may then guide others to it that they may also eat. See, this is my heart and ministry. When you taste of that tree of life, when you see Christ as that spiritual tree of life, as you find Christ in the word of God, hidden within these leaves, you want to tell other people. You can't be silent about that. And when you tell other people, you're leading them to the spiritual tree that they too, through the sacrifice of Christ on that tree, can gain eternal life and never see death for eternity. See, the Bible says, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, Proverbs 8, 19. Let us all bear in mind that the tree of life bears 12 manner of fruits. What does that represent spiritually? Well, here's the answer in letter 3, 1898, that this, the 12 manner of fruits, represents the spiritual work of our earthly missions. The word of God is to us a tree of life, and every portion of scripture has its use. In every part of the word is some lesson to be learned. And then learn how to study your Bibles, because this book is not a heap of odds and ends. It is an educator. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance the words of Christ, he will enlighten the mind and guide the research. Do you love studying your Bible? You know, I love every morning to get out the word of God, to spend time prayerfully in the word of God, praying as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, for the Holy Spirit to reveal unto me the deep things of God. You see, we are to study the word of God and to search whether these things are so as the faithful Bereans, as it tells us in Acts 17. So are you studying your word? Will you make a commitment today to spend more time with the Lord in his tree of life and eat those leaves every day? May God bless you in your research that you may become one with him and have that life eternal and partake of that tree of life in the earth made new. You know, as we move on now, I want you to understand something very important, that Christ is the vine. The man who loves God bears the fruit of a branch vitally connected with the vine. As he has opportunity, he does good. And everywhere, at all times, and in all places, he finds opportunity to work for God. He is one of the Lord's evergreen trees, and he carries fragrance with him wherever he goes. Isn't that a powerful thought? You can be an evergreen tree. In fact, it says in My Life Today, page 50, seek to be an evergreen tree. Seek to be an evergreen tree. Wear the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. Cherish the grace of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. This is the fruit of the Christian tree planted by the rivers of water. It always brings forth its fruit in its due season. You know, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon, Psalms 92, 12. And you know, when I read Psalms 1, 1 through 3, which I'm sure many of you have read, I want you to notice something now as we read these scriptures together that you will see the tree, the fruit, and the leaf contained in Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Let's read it. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. What a beautiful, beautiful understanding of the power of God. The beautiful understanding of the tree and its fruit and its leaf and its totality. Look at what it says in Isaiah 61, 3. 
that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You see, your life is to glorify your maker. That people see in you, Jesus, in your character, in your working for them in all places, wherever, in all opportunities. You seize those opportunities because you are so thrilled that you found salvation because of Christ. You want to tell every person you meet the good news. You know, that's part of the reason why we opened Sanitarium called Bella Vida Lifestyle Center. It's because of the study and the research that I have done into the medical missionary work. You see, I believe that the minister of the gospel must do something very important, and that is he is to teach and lead people not only to the health message, but to the gospel. And these two must blend because this, the teaching of helping people with their illnesses and helping people to find salvation is the true interpretation of the gospel. So I opened Bella Vida, and I want to read to you that our sanitariums are to be schools in which instruction shall be given in medical missionary lines. They are to bring to sin sick souls the leaves of the tree of life, which will restore to them peace and hope and faith in Christ Jesus. Forbid not those who have a desire to extend this work. You know, and as I'm looking at Bella Vida here, do you notice behind Bella Vida? What do you see? You see beautiful trees. You know, those trees behind Bella Vida, you have a cherry tree here, you have a weeping willow there. You can see in the orchard over in the background, you can see I have redwood trees, you see oak trees, but on the left, above the willow tree, what do you see? Eucalyptus trees. And I call those the great healing leaves for the lungs of human beings. When there's lung ailments, you saw the cough syrup, you saw the foot baths, you saw the pulverized, what? Eucalyptus wood. All healing properties in the eucalyptus, in the tree, in the bark, in the leaves. And you know what? I take people outside on the back deck and we do stretching and deep breathing on the back deck and we breathe in the fragrance, aromatherapy, right under all these beautiful eucalyptus trees that God divinely placed next to the sanitarium that was established in this grounds, I should say, was established in 1844. Isn't that powerful? So in every city, there should be a representation of true medical missionary work. The principles of genuine health reform are to be brought out in clear lines in our publications, in our lectures delivered to the patients in our sanitariums, and in every city. There are men and women who would go to a sanitarium were it near at hand. And here's a statement I was paraphrasing a few moments ago. The union of Christ-like work for the body and Christ-like work for the soul is the true interpretation of the gospel. Praise your name, God. You want to see total restoration within people's lives. You want to see them healed physically, mentally, and spiritually. That's in A Call to Medical Evangelism, page 7. And as we move on, there's a future promise. And it says this in Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. Friends, the redeemed saints who have loved God and kept his commandments here will enter in through the gates of the city and they'll have right to the tree of life. They will freely, they will eat freely of it as our first parents did before their fall. Their leaves of that immortal widespread tree will be for the healing of the nations. All their woes will then be gone. Sickness, sorrow, and death, they will never again feel for what? For the leaves of the tree of life have healed them. Maranatha 3.25. The leaves of the tree of life are preferred you. They are sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Take them, eat them, digest them, and your faint heartedness will pass away. Manuscript 71, 1898. So friends, I thank you for joining us today, but I want to just make an appeal. As you're watching there at home, 
if you feel the, your conscience being pricked by the Holy Spirit to make a further commitment to the Lord, to the Word of God, to spending time in prayer, to telling people and witnessing to others about what you found in the leaves of the tree. I just want to appeal to you to make that full surrender today. To say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the tree for me. Thank you for being the spiritual tree of life for me. Thank you that you connect the gulf that's been separated between the tree of life and us because of sin. Thank you for paying the price for my sins, that there is no condemnation for me. Thank you. If I die, I will come up at the resurrection. Or if I'm alive, I'll be translated to meet you in the air. Thank you that you have the tree of life again for us, proceeding out of the throne of God, the river of life, with a trunk on each side, bearing 12 manner of fruit. Thank you, Lord, that you have that waiting for us if we will choose today whom we will serve. God bless you. And may the Spirit of God be upon you. Hi, this is Danny Vieira, the director of the Risen Online School. I want to tell you today a little bit about myself and why you should take this course called Risen. I'm a wellness expert who's been in the wellness business for over 30 years. I did live radio for 15 years and I hosted many of the most renowned health educators and doctors and natural healers in the world. My program aired worldwide for over 15 years and people knew me as a wellness expert who specialized in cleansing and detoxifying the seven elimination organs of the body. Yes, we talk thoroughly about colon cleansing and how you can eliminate parasites from the body in this course. I also did a national infomercial on cleansing and detoxification that was a blockbuster, that millions of people contacted the station to order products on how to cleanse and detoxify their body of the poisons, the impurities, the pesticides, the chemicals, and the parasites. I'm also the director of Bella Vida Lifestyle Center besides Risen. At Bella Vida, we get patients that come from all over the world with every type of different disease, not wanting typical allopathic medicine, chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, but they're looking for options. They're looking for natural alternatives. I've also hosted Health and Healing Crusades for many years in California where some of the top renowned doctors and natural healers came, and that's part of this course as well. So what is in this course and what is it all about? These classes include scientific factual lectures from some of the most notable alternative health professionals in the field of nutritional science and natural healing, prevention and cure. Dr. T. Colin Cabell, who wrote the book, The China Study. Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Russell Blaylock, noted neurosurgeon who wrote the book, Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills. Dr. Neil Barnard, the president of the Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine. And one of my favorites, Charlotte Gerson, the daughter of Max Gerson, who cured incurable people of terminal diseases, even cancer, using diet therapy. You're going to learn about the eight laws of health that are based on biblical principles. You're going to learn about how attitude can affect your health and negative emotions or what I call toxic emotions could be killing you. So what will you get out of this course? You're going to get 18 hours of content on the true art of healing. Don't you want to learn how you can prevent and even reverse chronic diseases using simple natural remedies and adjusting your lifestyle habits. You're also going to learn some powerful detoxification techniques in this school of natural hygiene. You're going to learn how to cleanse the seven elimination organs of the body, how to do a liver flush, how to do a gallbladder cleanse, how to cleanse the colon in very simple ways. You're also going to learn about toxic emotions and how they can target specific body organs. You're going to gain an understanding on natural hygiene principles and how they can be applied. You're also going to become eligible to our advanced school and educational program 
on how to become a natural hygiene coach and possibly open your own lifestyle center like Bella Vita Lifestyle Center. For the low cost of this program, you will also receive nine digital books. Six of these I've written myself. The latest one I just published called Detox. It's going to teach you how you can do a 10-day detoxification program and it breaks it down on the symptoms of toxicity, why you should cleanse, and even testimonies on people that had some tremendous improvement in their health after they went through the program. There's other two beautiful books called The Ministry of Healing. This gives biblical principles on health mingled with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We also have The China Study by T. Colin Campbell, a beautiful book on disease and its causes. They called it the, the Grand Prix of Epidemiology by the New York Times. So please sign up today and join me as the director of Risen Online School. I'd love to be there to assist you and to see you further your education in natural healing. Thank you.